This is Life Questions, a program that prides itself in looking deep and wide into the Word of God for answers to your many questions about life. I'm Bill Harris, your host, and we're glad you could join us today. I want to thank you, our viewers, for the many questions that you have sent us about life. We've asked a team of local ministers to carefully and prayerfully research them and provide a godly perspective. I want you to meet them because they're chomping at the bit, ready to get going. First, we have Pastor Ryan Benroth of the Well Apostolic Center, followed by Pastor Jason Goss of Wapak Church and Pastor Rick Lamb of Hume United Methodist Church. And rounding up our panel, Pastor Gordon McPhail of Grace Community Church. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you with us today. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Um, well, going straight to our uh, viewer questions here, uh, it says here, I am preparing to send my son to a large public university. We've tried to give him a good foundation, but I've heard, that, I've heard so many stories about kids leaving the faith in college. What, what can I do to best prepare him to enter this environment, this college environment? Well, it's important to, uh, as she said, that, or whoever said, that that foundation included something in the sciences because that's where kids get derailed when they get to college. Um, and, and sometimes it's, um, it's peer pressure too because uh, if you say you're a Christian, the, the, the student body doesn't really, you know, once they get out and they feel their oats, they really uh, give you a hard time uh, oh, yes. uh, about your faith. And so, you know, you really need to have them understand how important it will be to get in with a Christian campus program uh, when they get there because mm -hmm. uh, many times uh, that's, uh, that's the best defense against uh, any kind of uh, being led away. Okay. Anybody else? I, I guess my question is why? Why would you send your kids there in the first place? Uh, it's like, um, well, I have a chance to go in the lion's den, but I may not get eaten by a lion. Yeah, but you might. Why, why even go? There are plenty of good Christian universities that sending, sending them to this spot. I mean, the secular university are set against Christianity. There is an agenda, and you can see that. So why would you send them to a spot? It, when, you, when they are going to look for a job, the job's not going to care what college they went to. They're going to simply ask, do they have a degree? Do they have it? So my, my, I agree with all of that, but my question is, why would you send them to that spot in the first place? Mm -hmm. um, is it nostalgia? Is it because you went there? Or is it because if it's truly what's best for your child, why not put them in a spot where they can learn and be educated with what they need, but also be in an environment where they can grow in their spiritual life? I, we've had conversations off camera about mm -hmm. if the most important thing is my faith and my walk with God and that eternal perspective, then why would I do, why wouldn't I do everything to protect that and everything to put myself in a position to make sure that's the healthiest? Excellent answer. Mm -hmm. if, if you do choose to go, the, the only, I, I'm basically just uh, Par double, parroting what others have said is that we want to keep Deuteronomy 6, 7 in mind, the, the idea that uh, we should be making spiritual conversation normal conversation in our household. Mm -hmm. And if that's been a mm -hmm. pattern of behavior in your upbringing uh, and in the upbringing of your children, that's good. If not, take this moment as an opportunity to start to introduce spiritual conversation as a normal kind of conversation because that way your children will feel as though they can talk with you about these things that they come well, up we, against. We talked about that earlier. That, ha that has to start at age three. <laughs> like, yeah. this is not going to happen yes. at, by the time they get 18. Yeah. Uh, you've done everything you can do or all the damage you're going to do. I mean, it's, it's on them now. Ken Ham has a book out uh, called Already Gone, which uh, shows how that kids early on are leaving the faith because the sciences in school... Uh, junior high and high school are doing the damage that once was reserved for college. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, when you go into the science classroom and everything seems to be evolution instead of in the beginning God, yeah. you know, then, uh, then 
the children are drawn away. Uh, uh, Lee Strobel tells the story in his one of his videos about how he remembers the place where he was sitting in his classroom when the teacher told about a science experiment that was debunked years later. You know, the science experiment really didn't work, but at that time, yeah. they thought that that's the beginning of life right there. And, mm -hmm. so, and so he became an atheist, and it was years before he was able to uh, learn enough about Jesus to say, you know what, I see the value, and, and gave himself over to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, like has been said there, having the conversations is important. I, I don't think it's that terrible of a deal if somebody gets shaken a little bit. But if you're not there and having those normal conversations, that, that foundation can either crumble or you can shore it up. Mm -hmm. And so the things that that, that foundational um, beliefs, you know, we no matter what stage in life you are, you're going to have some things that maybe challenge that. But it's like, are you still connected with the source of truth that is going to shore up that foundation? And so that can be from the parental, parental side of mm -hmm. things. But we're, if you're in a position to, uh, you know, represent the Father's heart on that, um, because He's the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So uh, perhaps you can put a reward out there to say, hey, I really value this, and it would mean a lot to me if you would pursue your relationship with God and connection with the church, and if you can make a, a reward out of that, then I think that's certainly in alignment with the heart of God. Yeah. I think that's one of the things we talked about was, you know, the, the conversation now has happened. Now it's on them. Mm -hmm. So getting involved in a Christian club and attending a church and, and not just going on Sunday, but being involved in a community of believers that are going to encourage and support you, that will help strengthen your faith. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't, you're on your own. And that's what happens when you're in those universities. You tend to feel on your own. And then you feel like, well, everyone else believes opposite of me. I must be the wrong one who's wrong. You let it go unsaid. Uh, sometimes we assume it, but you know, parents, you can pray for your child. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Like, continue to pray for your child. Pray for them every night. Pray for the Lord to uphold them, to strengthen them, to watch right. over them, to protect them, to guide them. Like you, you have a tremendous opportunity to yeah. to do a wonderful thing in their life. You know, sometimes your kingdom a year. Come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, your kingdom come, your will be done in my child's life yeah. as yeah. it is in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Put them in there. And so for, for, those, um, for those people that their child is on the cusp of going to college, that's all good advice. But for those that are, uh, have young ones in the home, it's important to start now to mm -hmm. train them in sciences. There's a lot of great videos on YouTube. Uh, Ken Ham has a bunch that really speak to, uh, you know, how important it is to understand the, uh, the whole dynamic of uh, how God is uh, the truth, that Genesis 1 uh, is exactly how it played out, and there's plenty of evidence to show that. So. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to uh, train our children in the way they should go, and that's certainly the way they should go. And, and some of that comes with those conversations that when my child are younger, they're going to ask questions why, yeah. and, and it's because I said so. But then as they grow, because they don't understand, but as they grow, why, now I need to begin to explain to them why. It can't just be, I told you so, because it goes from this passing of mom and dad's faith or belief is now mine mm -hmm. and yep. so I don't hang on to theirs I believe it because I actually yeah. know yeah. I've studied I've learned and as a parent part of the way we get to that is they come to me and ask a question and I don't just go well this is the way it is I show them how I arrive to the answer yeah and how I work mm -hmm. and then they can begin to process this and go through the, the the logical progression which then allows them to say you know what this is my faith it's my walk it's and it's it's personal mm -hmm. You know, I saw in the news sometime last year a story about uh, an organization that has been designed to train uh, teenagers mm -hmm. that are in the faith how to maintain their faith when they go through college. I wish I had been able to write something down as to the contact information about that organization, but it's, 
Uh, well, my producer, Jennifer, says it's Summit Ministries, okay? Summit, yeah. Summit Ministries. Uh, you know, that, that's a wonderful thing. I guess you could probably have a representative come into your local church or something of that nature. That might be something because it would support what you're trying to do with your families locally. They actually teach the kids how to uh, defend, defend their, their faith, faith. Yeah. when they're confronted mm -hmm. yeah. by, you know, those hostile college yeah. kids that uh, really want to yeah. make their mark. Because you know? these, these kids, these Christian kids, need to know the, 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 the what and the why behind that faith, you that's know? Right. Yeah. Because in many cases, you know, they, they hear their parents and that's wonderful for a, a little bit of uh, incentive, but they need to, it needs to get in them for their sake. That's they need right. to buy into well, it. Well, and you need to know how to defend it because there, yes. are, when you're thrown into a university, you've got professors and they've prepared for this argument that you haven't yes. prepared for. Yes. That's right. And so. Uh, and they can dismantle you. Right, and they, because you're not ready for it. But mm -hmm. if I it take time to prepare, now I can argue back. But in the college, setting, sometimes you're not ready for that, which, you know, that's why I asked the question why. And on top of that, let's add to, there's a financial, typically a Christian university is cheaper than a, a public, you know, so there's possibility that hey, you might be saving some money too, <laughs> which <laughs> it not, might not be a bad incentive. thing. Another incentive, huh? Okay. All right. Very Another good. Another reason why. Yeah. All right. Well, then let's go to question number two. Um, what does it mean to abide in Christ? Now, we're going to have to take a break in a few seconds, but let's get started on that at least, and then we'll finish up on the other side. What does it mean to abide in Christ? Well, sure, I'll jump on. Okay. Um, I, I really enjoyed receiving this question, I have to say. Um, to abide in Christ, if I were to try and summarize it, is to live as a Christian. It is to be in faithful and obedient dependence on grace. So obviously the chief illustration that Jesus uses is in John 15, where right. he's talking about a branch onto a vine. Uh, yeah. And it says, you know, if you're not connected to the vine, yes. you will not produce any fruit. Yes. Only if you're connected to the vine yeah. do you produce fruit, because that's the only way that you're going to be alive in Christ. If you went to 1 John 3 and 4, you'll see a series of statements about what abiding is. Uh, another helpful thing to know is that the word abide uh, is also the same word that's used for remain. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So like when Jesus says, truly I tell you the works that I worked in Capernaum, if I worked them in Sodom, Sodom would have remained to this day. The word could have also been translated abided to this day. So it means to remain in Christ or to stay in Christ. It means to live and persevere as a Christian. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Well, I don't know if it's the time for a break yet. Uh, we probably should take one right now uh, to be on the safe side and we'll come back. I, I want to continue this. You've just, you've just struck a match here. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's put it on fire. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Thank you for staying with us. Now, we want to continue our conversation about abiding in Christ. Gentlemen, we have three left. Uh, you've already had great, great uh, comments on it. What does it mean to you specifically to abide in Christ? I think exactly what he was saying, that you're, re you're walking with Christ. You're living your life according to him. It's really that aspect of continually making him Lord over your life. And, but then there's also this aspect of being connected like the vine. You're connected. He is the source of life. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you can't experience fullness of life separate from him. So when you're abiding in the vine, you're connected to the vine, then you are able to draw on the life and the nutrients that he has from just it's kind of similar to you know this conversation with the woman at the well it's like take a drink of me and you'll have a wellspring of life that comes out of you as a result so um we got to receive from him that life but there's also this aspect that he abides in us so he says you abide in me 
and I'll abide in you. Yes. And it's like, I'm, he's going to transform the inside, the outside, yes. everything, all yeah. things made new. Yeah. You know, when people say, uh, Bill, how are you doing today? I say that I am highly favored and well connected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that? That's what it means to me. I, I what does it mean to you? I think they both summed it up. It's, it's <laughs> about being connected to Christ. It's yeah. that continued relationship, that daily walk. That I'm not going to do it on my own because when that moment I do, I'm con I'm disconnecting. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm remaining in in Him, and so trusting in Him, walking Him, living in Him, and because of that, and you said it, then He lives in me. Right. Is it possible? And we're getting to you now. Okay. Uh, is it possible that a person thinks they're connected to the vine? They think mm -hmm. that uh, they're abiding oh, yeah, in Him, oh, yeah. and they are not, in fact. You know, yeah. the deceiver is out there just to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the sneaky ways he operates. I mean, uh, John 8 tells us that his native language is lying, and, uh, and uh, he's good at it. He lied, uh, yes, he lied to uh, uh, Cain when, you know, and Cain killed his brother. So yeah. it was all tied to yeah. that whole. And, and so here we are. Uh, you know, we have to stay connected, like you were saying, abiding in the vine. Because, and Jesus goes on to say that uh, if you do not abide in the vine, then you will wither and die and you'll be thrown into the fire. Mm -hmm. Who wants that? I mean, right, you know, right, right, so right. so it's important for us to recognize how how uh, abiding in Christ is such an important aspect because he, he gives us the example and he says, because I abide in the <coughs> father. That's how we're supposed to abide mm -hmm. in him. Sure. And so Jesus draws from the father. We draw from Jesus and and and. Who was it said something about the lady at the well and the water of life uh, in John chapter 8 where it's explained that the water of life is the Holy Spirit, yes. which had yes. not yet been given. That's and right. so it's That's important right. for us to recognize that that uh, a big part of the abiding in Christ is having the Holy Spirit in our life, that we mm -hmm. draw from uh, the Spirit because we're told that we don't even have to worry about what we're going to answer in the times to come because the spirit within us will give us the answer. Mm -hmm. And we know we're abiding by the fruit. Yeah. Right. right. Do, you know, for the spirit, yeah. you know, they're, like they're present life. in your life. <laughs> yeah. Amen. But it's important yeah. for us to read the word of God to continue to uh, because we can't remember something if it hasn't been put in there to start with. Yeah. And so in order for the Spirit to give us the right answer, we have to have put it in so that the Spirit can draw from that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, although you start off with the comments about this because this is a... a, a, a dear to his heart. Yes, yeah, very dear to your heart. I'll let you do the concluding words on this point before we move on to the next question. You got anything that you didn't get in the first time around you'd like to put in now? Uh, not, not particularly. I think that we've, we've really uh, given a good a round answer mm -hmm. that, that to abide in Christ is to remain in Christ, to persevere in Christ. If you persevere in Christ, the mark of that is you will display fruit, the yeah. ordinary fruits of the Spirit, self-control, love, peace, patience, kindness. You are gonna display those wondrous fruits in abundance. And if you don't display those fruits, you are not Yikes. abiding. Right. You, you are not present in Christ. You have no confidence and assurance of his good pleasure, and you ultimately sit in threat of his judgment. So. It's, it's not necessarily a subjective feeling, but sometimes it is. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see clear marks of it. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. very good. Let's move on to uh, another question. We are told to love the sinner and hate the sin. But it seems that if we call out someone's sin, we are blasted for being, quote unquote, intolerant. How do we live life out? Uh, well, how do we live out this biblical uh, principle in the world of cancer culture? Well, um, I think we need to establish that one, love does not mean I agree with you, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Just because I love someone, I treat them with respect and kindness, but we can disagree. And the problem mm -hmm. we have in today's society is, if you love me, you have to agree with me. And that's not true. And so there's a, there's a definition problem that we mm -hmm. have. The, I think the other thing is, cancer culture and, and this kind of thing is, 
we should expect it to happen. Jesus said, they're not going to love me, they won't love you. That's right. And I think too many times we, we expect people yeah. to, you know, agree with us. Especially our family. Agre exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have this idea that, that it's not going to happen. The other, the other issue is, listen, we cannot, I think too many times, I think we've all seen people stand on the street corner and, and I went to a hockey game in Columbus and there was a guy out there preaching, everybody's going to go to hell. <laughs> His message was right. And I, I go back to something my dad taught me. You could be 100% right and still be wrong. Yeah. The message was right, but how he was displaying yeah. it yeah. wasn't convicting love. Yeah. Wasn't convi So then what immediately people are turned off by it. They're, so there's the idea of there's a right and a wrong way to help people understand, I love you, I don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. And we struggle with that. Mm -hmm. What you're touching on is that one of the elements is necessary for a meaningful conviction of sin. Oftentimes, obviously God can act outside of these parameters, oftentimes is within the context of a relationship Absolutely. and particularly within a context of a relationship in which trust has been built. Uh -huh. And trust typically, though not universally, is built over time. Yep. Right. And in order to have the opportunity to speak into someone's life from a posture where they understand that you do in fact love them and you do in fact want what's best for them, you need that time mm -hmm. and you need that trust so that you can obey First Peter 3.15 Always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that you have, mm -hmm. but do it with gentleness and respect. Or oh, Colossians yeah. 4, 6, let your speech be gracious, seasoned yeah. with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer yep. everyone. So yeah. could be right, you do it the wrong way. Well, I think the cancel culture thing is, uh, I mean, it's, it's really a ministry of rejection and destruction. It's like, well, if you believe one way, your career deserves to be destroyed. You don't have value anymore. It's rejection. And that doesn't look like God's kingdom. So I think it's uh, the thief well, comes to steal, kill, and know, destroy. For the truth is, we've all been canceled. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, if we're working with God's system, you know, each one of us has done some capital punishment crime. You know, whether it's uh, Jesus said, if you look at a woman to lust after, you've committed adultery right so you know uh the ten commandments makes us all guilty so mm -hmm. i'm sorry i that's just okay <laughs> wanted to interject that real quick yeah so you can finish your thought yeah well that the aspect of we don't have to agree <coughs> in order for me to love you i mean you look at the disciples uh tried to prepare uh samaria for jesus and they rejected mm -hmm. and said they didn't want him well and they asked well, should we call down fire from heaven to yeah. consume them? <laughs> like, they're asking, should we uh, invoke cancel culture here? <laughs> and Jesus says, you don't know what spirit yeah, you're of. Right. That's a and, good scripture to use for yeah. it, though, I'll tell you. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going through Revelation right now on our Wednesday night services, and we're, we're at 13, which is the mark of the beast. Yes. I think we should understand that this idea is setting up that idea the feeling of the mark of the beast is if you don't accept it you can't buy you can't sell That's and right. i think we're seeing that in our society if you don't believe what i believe you can't be a part of it if you don't act this way you you can't participate and that idea is is this is setting up a feeling and an atmosphere where it's mm -hmm. if you don't join us well you can't have a job here if you don't join us, and that's setting up for for what's to come so on one hand, man, I hope that it goes away. On the other hand, I know it's only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. I had written down four things that I thought might be potentially constructive as we try and work inside of that culture. Is to one, remember that gospel faith must always precede gospel obedience. So if you're trying to confront someone on sin for sin's sake without them knowing the gospel, without them yeah. having a, a, been born again in Christ, mm -hmm you might be doing cart before the horse. If they don't believe sin is sin, it doesn't do any good. So <laughs> yeah. that's one element. Another is to be ready and willing to represent our opponents in a way that they would accept. One of the ways that you can be heard by those that disagree with you is to represent them in a way that they would find uh, acceptable. 
Thirdly, certain mediums are simply unhelpful for nuanced conversations. I think sometimes we're trying to have these conversations over social media platforms. I don't know if we're allowed yeah, to name yeah, them. Yeah. I won't. <laughs> um, but I, th I think that those are unhelpful mediums. Yeah, I don't yep, think that's yeah. the place to do this. And then fourthly, unimpeachable honesty and kindness is the best medicine for cancel culture. Everywhere that you know, scripture says you're going to get these bad reputations built up about you, what do we do? Live such holy lives amongst the pagans that when they see your good works, they will praise God in heaven. Like mm -hmm. right. the, the response to being canceled is to be more honest and more kind. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's how I we respond. I think it's important to realize that every person you disagree with has been made in the image of God. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. they, you, We don't want to demonize the other person just because you don't agree with them. You know, and if we... Uh, kind of goes along with what he was just saying. It's like if you're only focused on the sin, if you could also maybe focus on the righteousness, the thing that they were created to be, pull that out. It's like I think we get into that situation where a little bit of leaven will leaven the whole batch. It's like yeah. you start pulling out the righteousness yeah. of Jesus, who they're created to be, then. Uh, people respond to that more than you throw in accusations. It was, it was it Solomon, was it, that said, uh, no, I think it was Solomon, said that he that with souls is wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. And that's what we, and sometimes it's just common sense, don't you think? Sometimes it's just common yeah. sense that you, that not to approach it this way, better to go that common way. Common sense, but as a Christian, we get overzealous. I gotta win people, which yeah. is good. Yeah. But sometimes winning the person is not punching in your face because <laughs> the moment you throw something, somebody's putting up their dukes and they're yeah. going to fight back. Yeah. So it's it's kind of subverting them and saying, hey, listen, I have a, a message for you because I care about you. Mm -hmm. Let's have this conversation. It's not, yeah. I'm going to attack you because you're a sinful person. Instead, I love you. I, I care about you. And, and willing to have this conversation to answer questions. And, and sometimes we just have to learn how to approach it. One of the things that we have to be uh, careful about is... There are countries uh, nowadays that are establishing laws that make it difficult sometimes that uh, you can't use certain words. Yeah. And, and many of the words that you're not permitted to use are contained in the Bible. And that makes it difficult then to be able to uh, uh, carry on a conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. just something to think about. All right, very good. And on that note, we're going to have to end it. And we'll just hold that thought and let it sink in. Appreciate that very much. A lot of time for today, but um, we'll be back again next week. We want to thank our fine ministers for all their input and certainly hope it's been a blessing to you. Send us, continue to send us your cards and letters. Until next week, I'm Bill Harris. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.